Hello and welcome to Let's Play Serbia and Victoria 2. By the way, I live by the park, so if you hear some weird noise and screams in background... <laughs> and apparently those are kids trying to kill each other. Hey! Fun! So, I don't know what are the reasons, but uh, there you go. Those are kids. No one can understand them. And I can't do anything to prevent it, so I just close the window. Hey! Hopefully that will fix the noise. Ah, so anyway, let's back to Victoria. Um, now, we're playing Serbia. As you can see, Serbia is not in a great political situation. Serbia just became independent from Ottoman Empire. And it was still economically huge, hugely dependent on Austria. Which is why you might, you might actually see in your nation's mod that Serbia is not in uh, Ottoman sphere. And has really high relations with Austria. This is because uh, there was a trade agreement between Serbia and, and Austria that uh, Serbia couldn't, wasn't allowed to trade with any other country but Austria at those times. Kind of an embargo, but uh, eh, not very great for us. Anyway, so now the huge problems we have here is that we have course on Austria for Vojvodina region. It says Slavonia here, but it's really Vojvodina. Slavonia is in Croatia here. Now, other course we have on Bosnia, which is in Ottoman Empire at the moment, Southern Serbia and North Macedonia. So those two provinces. Later on, if we want to form Yugoslavia, which is confederation of South Slavs, uh, we of course gonna need our own course and then we need Montenegro we also need Croatia and Slovenia here now we can also form Greater Yugoslavia which is if we ever become a great power and sphere Bulgaria they will join us once we form Yugoslavia and they will be an accepted culture actually which is really interesting um, now I have few goals for this game and I, I think I wrote them somewhere. Let me check. I know we... Okay, so... First of all, we need to become great power by 1880s, which is quite challenging one. Then we need to become... Uh, actually form Yugoslavia by 1890s. And I need to finish as one of the top five countries. Which might be possible. We'll see how... How are we gonna do that? Now, let's fix our budget. First, I'll have to go for taxes 100% on every strata. Unfortunately, sorry for that. And increase tariffs. We also want administration to get to 100%. Now, since we are in Ottoman sphere, that means we can't really fight them at this moment. So, I'm actually going to ally them. And see if we can abuse them for some of our war goals see how that works also going to switch to nationalist party because we need jingoism in the early game there we go and i'm gonna start encouraging bureaucrats for the early game okay so that should be pretty much it trade also i might want to let's see clipper convoys Ah, uh, the mine is rather high. Yeah, I don't want to stockpile, it, stockpile them at the moment. So let's just unpause. Okay, so... There are a few available strategies with Serbia and Victoria. Now, the most common one, and uh, I've seen few Let's Plays. People tend to go for, of course, allying Ottomans and then attacking Tunis for establishing a protectorate. Now this is actually not a not a bad choice. I actually used to do it uh, earlier, but the best choice is this: uh, demanding concession from Egypt. Now, why is Egypt better than Tunis? If you establish protectorate on Tunis, you'll get, uh, I think, slightly slightly larger population, perhaps some more some more money, and so I think it's strategically maybe a better choice. But uh, the problem is that Tunis costs 10 infamy 
Egypt only five. This is because we are acquiring the whole Tunis like country and we are only requiring one region from Egypt if we ever declare war on them. So now also Egyptian provinces are pretty much all of the, their provinces are really rich because they are either have cotton or they have a uh, tropical wood. Now tropical wood is really valuable and if you ever can get one of the, their provinces they have uh, tropical wood in you should really get it. Now there are some other strategies with uh, Serbia, including, for example, attacking Najid, and then later on Tunis. Also, I did one six strategy earlier, uh, actually acquiring Tunis as soon as I can, and then declaring war on two Sicilies for Sicily. Now you can do this, but it's really it's extremely risky. It has low uh, chances of being actually successful. So I really don't advise it. Uh, anyway, the way you you get to Sicily is still make sure that Ottomans join your war against them. Now also transport all of your troops to to Tunis and make sure that you have them in either Tunis or Kairouan provinces because two Sicily, two Sicilies will often uh, invade Bizarate and you really can't beat their armies so what you want to do is to make sure that Ottomans blockade two Sicilies here if they control Bay of Naples and Straits, Straits of Messina then uh, two Sicilies can't uh, move troops to, to Sicily which then means you can transport your troops to Palermo, Catania and Messina and occupy those regions and you will win the war. Now after that you can go for Sokoto or for Ethiopia or whatever. Um, because you will have enough manpower to deal with them. Now the biggest downside is that the Sicilians will often rebel and even start a crisis against you and if you lose a crisis uh, you'll lose a lot of prestige and then uh, you will basically stay only with Tunis and with probably no infamy to start any other wars uh, which is really really bad so as you can see we now declared war on, on uh, Egypt of course Ottomans will deal with that so we don't have to pay attention there and well, yeah, I promised that I will I would talk about history, uh, and I'm gonna start doing that in a sec. Just let okay, yeah. Now the interesting thing is that if you go for, for example, Sinai, Ottomans will often just send troops to Sinai and start occup occupying it first because that's the main war goal, and if they do so, that means you we will maybe get a ticking war score which then means we can maybe add another war goal but I really don't advise you doing this because uh, Ottomans might peace out without giving you all of the war scores or war goals actually as you will see they will they will soon add their own war goals because they have cores on Egypt here like all of this is Ottoman uh, well, actually, not Ottoman territory, but what they're considered their, their course to be. So be careful with uh, doing that. Also, we are going to declare war on Nijid as soon as possible. So I'm going to start justifying the war. Okay, so most of the people know Serbia for a well, 90s war, but uh, yeah, that's kind of inner problem and then of course starting the first world war well actually not starting it but being involved in it and being one of the reasons for, the, for Austria to start a world war now I'm going to, to talk about that later on because uh, it's really hard to understand the politics in Balkans in those times and what actually great powers were doing and trying to do uh, 
So my history teacher actually in um, in high school uh, said one sentence that I remembered and it wasn't really clear for me how that was possible. So he said that Serbia could actually stay out of the World War I and could probably stay neutral. And World War I, which was quite a ridiculous statement for me at that time, being that uh, Austria declared war on Serbia and then uh, Russia joined on our side, Germany joined on Austrian side, France on uh, our and UK later on, and chain reaction basically. So it's really hard to understand. I, I actually watched a few of the British documentaries on World War I, uh, also trying, trying to find a decent Austrian or German documentary, but I couldn't really find it. Maybe I'm, I'm looking... Perhaps they're only in German and the titles aren't translated, so I can, can't really find those. Also, I was reading a few files uh, and actually got to know that we could actually stay out of the World War I. We probably couldn't await the Austrian-Serbian war, but we could definitely stay out of the World War I. Now I'm going probably too far ahead. First we need to deal with the Ottoman situation. So, um, first of all, Slavs, that's Russians, Serbians, Bulgarians, Croatians, Bosnians, Macedonians, Czechs, Polacks, or, yeah, well, I guess Polacks, Slovaks, uh, and others. Did I forget anyone? Yeah, never mind. Um, anyway, there was in Europe in 7th century, there was a huge mig migration of Slavs. Now, the ancient Slav homeland is considered today to be today's Poland. Somewhere around here, uh, parts of Eastern Prussia, and... Oh, there we go. New Year. And, of course, Western Poland. So, there was a... Uh, let me just pause for a moment. I need to switch our national focus from bureaucrats to the clergymen as soon as we hit 100. Actually, 1% one, 1 there. There we go. Pause for a moment. And start the clergyman. clergyman. There we go. Also, we don't need to spend so much money on administration anymore. Let's go with education and military spending. That should do it. Okay, I'm paused. So I'm gonna slow down a bit. Okay, uh, so... Also one thing I forgot to do... Stop auto-creating leaders, get rid of useless... Ah, uh, this one. Okay, there we go. So... Most of the Slavs migrated in the 7th century. And... We had first Slav state that was... Actually, Khanat of Bulgaria. Now, Bulgarians are a mix of Slavs and uh, some early ages Turkish tribes, or... I am i can't be completely accurate on this, even Bulgarian historians are not... Uh, are kind of divided on Bulgarians being only Slavs and a uh, and mixed population. I can't really... I don't really want to get into the, that. So anyway... Um, Serbians, Bosnians and Croatians occupied most of these regions in the beginning, although many Croatians were actually a bit northern western Croatia here. And first states were made in some 8th to 10th century. Uh, we had Serbia and then a bit later Bosnia, Croatia also before Bosnia. Now. How, how did Slavs actually get those territories? In 7th and 8th century, Byzantine Empire was really weak and they were on the verge of collapse and they're having the... oh wait, wait a sec. I need to switch the national focus here. Starting encouraging soldiers. 
in Sinai, and actually we can start the war against... Oh! Actually lost the Cassus Belay. See? This is why I hate going speed 5. Let's go to speed 3. That's okay. I also start, start making a naval base. And check the... Well, clippers are still in high demand, but I'm still going to s stockpile some of them. From trade, there we go. Okay, so Byzantine em Empire was on verge of collapse. Uh, Ostrogoths, I think it was Ostrogoths who occupied most of Italy. Byzantine Empire was still holding some of the southern Italian state states, uh, but the biggest problem was they were fighting a huge war against Persia. Then they had some rebellions in Egypt, and Egypt was at that time their richest province and they simply didn't have enough men to fight everywhere in Italy, in Balkans, in in, uh, in Middle East against Persia so they actually tried to forcefully migrate their people to to Anatolia or actually these regions so they actually have more men to to fight against invaders and invaders were mostly barbarian tribes such as Slavs, Avars, and later on Huns in uh, Balkans, of course. And they actually went as far as uh, laying siege on Constantinople, present day Istanbul, which was the cap capital of the Byzantine Empire. Now, of course, that failed because uh, barbarian tribes were never really able to lay siege on on any of the huge uh, Byzantine uh, cities because of course walls and they didn't have t technology for for beating them so so then uh, realizing that they can't really do that they just simply settled in areas of Western Balkans and Bulgarians of course in Eastern Balkans now let's just declare war call ally Ottoman Australia they joined. Okay. And I'm also going to start justifying a war on uh, Oman. There we go. Oh, see. Yeah, I need to stop there. Okay. Uh, since, since Ethiopia is actually in a war with, with Egypt, we might actually be able to get a few territories from them also. That would bo boost our population. I don't know. Let's f first finish this war and then we will see. So, okay. Uh, Byzantine Empire realized that they can't really fight offensive war against barbarians because they didn't have enough manpower f to do that. So they actually offered Slavs to settle there and then defend their borders against other barbarian tribes. Now Slavs weren't a pretty nomadic tribe, so they of course agreed, and seeing that uh, economical and military power of Byzantine Empire was vast, they... that was probably the only logical choice, so... Uh, and then when first of the Slav states were made, uh, Byzantine Empire started converting them to Christianity and now there was of course division because uh, at those times that is still 8th, 7th, 8th or 9th century um, uh, Catholic, uh, actually not Catholic, uh, Christian church was still not divided so although there were some pretty significant differences between them it still wasn't completely divided and uh, it could have been easily the case that uh, Serbians and Bosnians ended up being Catholics at some point and not Orthodox. So, which can, which was a choice few times in history. So when the first Serbian state was uh, formed, it consisted mostly of present-day Montenegro 
Uh, I think it included also uh, this region from Bosnia and then uh, kind of like something like this uh, present day Kosovo and parts of uh, central this is northern Serbia but it really isn't this is central Serbia and then this is considered as northern Serbia today but uh, never mind okay let's go with Motuzin Tod and we're also going to Ottomans in yet another war against Oman. Play war. Zanzibar. Coalize. There we go. Okay, they didn't join. They will join soon, I guess. Let's see though. So while we're fighting that war. Okay, um so the first idea of Serbia was to become a good kingdom. Now to become a kingdom you needed a blessing from Pope or either Patriarch from Constantinople which uh, Patriarch didn't want to, to give because uh, Byzantine Empire didn't want uh, those Slav states to grow as they often fought a war against uh, Bulgarian Empire which was at that time formed. Oh, we actually acquired Legit, so let's form an alliance and call Ottomans in. We actually want Ottomans to stay our great power for some time so we can abuse them. See if they wanna. They will probably join the war. Or ally. There we go. Okay, I also want to start expanding on our base here. Um, okay, so there were three countries that were fighting wars over early early days of uh, or early medieval period. So Serbia, Bulgaria, and the Byzantine Empire in Balkans, that is, of course. Now, Serbia was often allied to one of the sides, and um, that was more of a political battle than any other of course due to not having too many troops and low population um, our king somehow managed to win some critical battles ambushing Byzantine troops while they were moving through through Macedonia or Albania and most of the land was acquired in th those times now most of our princes w were actually as uh, Serbia was often ally of Byzantine Empire or actually ally and a vassal at the same time uh, most of our princes were educated in uh, Constantinople and uh, Greece and once Tsar Dushan actually uh, formed a Serbian Empire most of the Greek land was included in that and he was uh, coronated uh, Emperor of Serbs and Greeks and the Serbian Empire at those times was uh, something like this. Okay, here it didn't include Bosnia. Bosnia was a separate state. And of course a province of uh, East Macedonia which is actually Thessaloniki region. Now I kind of skipped a bit. So first of all um, we had, yeah, the situation of first king, Serbian kingdom. So Serbia actually acquired a blessing from Pope. Oh, at least one. Yes. So a blessing from Pope was acquired and Serbia was proclaimed to be a kingdom. Now from those times the huge Serbian expansion started and we acquired most of the of those regions. Now the interesting thing is again to become an emperor, Sardusian, that is 14th century uh, expansion. He needed to to get a blessing from patriarch again, and this time, being an Orthodox state, it had to be a patriarch. Um, now. 
previously in 10th and 18th century, Serbian church got independence from from a Byzantine church. And so since Byzantine Emperor didn't want to see any other empire but themselves in uh, in Balkans and uh, and of course uh, the Middle East or Asia Minor, they didn't allow for Serbia to become an empire. Uh, that's why Serbian church, church needed to be promoted to patriarchy, or I don't know if there is an English term for that. Um, mostly, that's the high rank of high rank of one church in uh, Orthodox religion. So, once that was done, uh, finally, Lucian was proclaimed to be an emperor. Serbs and Greeks, of course. Now, most of our culture is uh, a mix of Slav and Greek or Byzantine culture, which actually made a uh, setup for good, great relations between Serbia and Greece, and even later on. Most of uh, most of Serbs and Greece consider those nations to be a brother nations or something like that. So, anyway, now the huge Ottoman expansion started in in well, we can say 13th century, when Byzantine Empire lost some huge and devastating battles in uh, Asia Minor. Now we also had a Hungarian Empire. Actually, I'm not sure if it was an empire. I think it, it was a kingdom. It doesn't really matter. It was still a very powerful, powerful state in Balkans, and was probably, maybe even um, stronger than the Serbian Empire in those times. Now, realizing the threat of uh, Ottomans, Dusan abandoned abandoned his plans of uh, of sieging Constantinople and assuming the Byzantine Empire so he actually wanted to create a new Byzantine Empire in uh, Serbia and Greece of course inheriting all of the other Byzantine states um, now realizing the threat of Ottomans and Hungarians on the north he abandoned those plans and was preparing for a crusade against Ottomans to stop their expansion in Europe. Now, uh, he was hesitating on uh, rushing into Ottoman land and destroying them because he was afraid that Hungary might backstab him and take most of the Serbian territories. So, he sent a diplomat to Pope asking for uh, converting Serbia to Catholic country and naming Dusan to be leader of the crusade against Ottomans. Now, unfortunately, during the diplomat being away, Dusan died and Serbia was split into several principalities uh, ruled by landlords. Uh, we have Mm, three of those were major. Uh, Kosovo, which was led by... Uh, well, it actually doesn't matter. Names don't matter here. Mostly, it's important to know that uh, Norton and all of these regions were actually very rich because there, there was a huge migration of uh, well, German or Saxon miners to Balkans. I don't know what was the real reason for that, I think. It was an unstable region for those times, or something. Anyway, they they boosted our economy by large amounts, as though those were educ well, not educated, but uh, kind of professional miners. And at those times, Slavs didn't uh, really have any miners because they were still a barbaric tribe. So anyway. Um, those were really rich regions, mostly rich by uh, with silver and uh, copper. And Ottomans uh, saw those regions as a 
very valuable and very strategically important targets. So unfortunately, due to being split into several principalities, none of those princip principalities until the very late uh, Battle of Kosovo fought together. So they were split and they fought uh, separate wars against, against Ottomans and now of course there were there was a huge battle of Maritza which was complete disaster. Ottomans managed to somehow uh, make an ambush and destroy uh, 70,000 troops while having only 10 to 20,000 according to some historical uh, sources. That's not really clear. And later on they also fought battles against Bulgarians, Wallachians. Wallachians actually managed to stop them for a while. And then there was a huge battle of Kosovo. But before that there was also a battle of Granik which uh, stopped Ottoman expansion for a while. For actually not that, that not too many years. And that battle of Kosovo which uh, was a real bloodbath. It's estimated that Serbian side had uh, 30,000 troops and Ottoman 40,000. Now on Serbian side that uh, Bosnia was fighting also and some part of Croatian armies. Also there are some sources that say that Albanians had some minor armies there. I can't really confirm that, I don't know that much. Uh, so anyway, both leaders died and the battle was ended basically in a draw. Ottomans weren't able to conquer the rest of the Balkans for 70 more, more years, so that's kind of a win, but it really isn't, as uh, there was no manpower enough to fight Ottomans anymore. So now is a time where Hungary, Hungary realized the Ottomans actually are a huge threat for even the west of the Europe. So they started gathering troops and started uh, sending diplomatic missions to France for, to beg for help. And in that times France actually just finished the war against England and was actually able to gather some troops and send some knights to aid Hungarian troops and rest of the Christian troops. Uh, those were mostly Bulgarian and Wallachian troops. And there was a huge battle of Nicopolis. Now Serbia was a, at those times vassal of uh, Ottoman Empire. And we were famous for our um, heavy cavalry and our leader actually decided to aid Ottomans in that battle because he thought that uh, Serbia wouldn't exist anymore if uh, if Hungarians were to win because they would just occupy most of the Serbia and uh, annex it which was probably the right call so in that battle Ottomans crushed Western allies and from those times there was no real threat for them and they just continued expanding in uh, Western Europe. So that's pretty much the medieval history. And I think it's the right time to save the game. Since I'm done with abusing Ottomans pretty much, I think next war will be against Ethiopia and then I'll expand into Asia to gather a manpower and start a liberation war for most of our course.